Okay, so there are types and pictures and portraits of Jesus in the Old Testament. And if you are saying like, how can I see this? How, what are you talking about? You can see that in Isaac's story because in Genesis 22, Isaac was going up the mountain with his father and he was carrying the wood on his back. The father was carrying the torch and the knife in his hand, which speaks of God's wrath. And Isaac being a picture of Jesus, of Yeshua HaMashiach, if you're in Israel, Jesus the Messiah, he was going up the mountain, he had the wood on his back, he was laid upon the wood on the top of the mountain, and he was bound, and then there was a substitute ram, which is a male sheep, an an adult male sheep, who substituted Isaac instead at the very end. It was such a picture of Jesus. You might want to check that episode out. You can see it right there if you wish, or go back and then watch this one. But this one, Genesis 24, you're seeing Isaac and you're seeing the servant of Abraham who's a picture of the Holy Spirit. And he goes out to find the bride for Isaac, right? Like the bride of Christ. This is going to be so good. I love this, you guys. All right, here we go. Let's get right into it. So, So Abraham, he is a type of God the Father, right? We saw that in the last episode in Genesis 22. And now we're seeing Isaac, right? Isaac as a type of Jesus the Son. He was also that was also Genesis 22. And now we're seeing Eleazar. Eleazar and it doesn't say his name in Genesis 24, it doesn't mention him, but it does mention that he's the chief steward of Abraham, okay? Of the father. And his name means comforter. So this is really exciting because Jesus called the Holy Spirit the comforter or the helper, right? So Eliezer is a type of the Holy Spirit. And whenever you see the Holy Spirit as a type in the Old Testament, his name is not mentioned. Isn't that interesting? So Rebecca would be a type of the church, right? So that's what we see in this episode. It's so exciting, you guys. So Eleazar, his name means my God, the helper or comforter. My God, the helper or comforter. Jesus called the Holy Spirit a comforter. You're going to see that in a second here. So Eleazar, Hebrew, God is help. The steward of Abraham's household. We saw that in Genesis 15. And Eliezer from the Hebrew, the word El, which is God, right? And then the verb Azar, which is to help. God to help. (laughs) This is so good. So the father in this story, the father dispatches his unnamed servant, who is the helper or comforter, to what? Go find the bride for Isaac, who is a picture of Jesus. This is so exciting, you guys. So he dispatches his unnamed servant, who is the helper or comforter. And we know in John 14, 26, it says this. Jesus said this, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, right? Whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, Jesus said that. Isn't that exciting? That's awesome. So Rebecca, who is a picture and a type of the church, right? And her name, Rivka in Hebrew, which means secured. Some translations say like tied securely or tied up. But the real, the best translation is secured. And what does that tell us? We are secured. We who believe in Jesus Christ, we are secure in him. We're in Christ. Paul says that over and over and over. There's no condemnation. That means no punishment, no God's wrath for those who are in Christ Jesus. Christ is just Greek for Messiah. If you are in the Messiah Jesus, there's no condemnation for you. That means you're secure. Isn't that great, you guys? That's good news, my friend. That's no, that's great news. <laughs> and at the end of this episode, you, my friend, are going to have an opportunity. If you've never given your life to Jesus, you may be feeling something in your heart right now, a conviction or a knocking on the door. It's like God saying, hey, I'm speaking to you. Would you like to receive my son and be saved and, and, and follow him as your Lord and Savior? You can do that, my friend, because Jesus is a prayer away. And you'll have that opportunity at the end of this episode. I promise you that. All right. 
And by the way, if you haven't subscribed yet, you may want to consider subscribing to my channel right now. We're doing a series of you and I together, a series called Jesus in the Old Testament or how to find Jesus in the Old Testament. And you're seeing it in Genesis and we're just going methodically through the Old Testament and we're finding him in all of it. It's so exciting, you guys. And comment down below too. I love your comments, whether you agree or disagree. Please go ahead and feel free to comment down below. Just keep it respectful. So here we go, you guys. We are in this right now, Rebecca being a type and picture of the church. And here we see the New Testament is unfolded in the Old or concealed, right? It could be concealed in the Old Testament. And the Old Testament is unfolded in the New or revealed. The, the New Testament is concealed in the Old Testament. And then the Old Testament is revealed in the New Testament. It's all really one testament. It's almost like tree roots for this great olive tree. There's tree roots down below. You can't see everything, but you know it's there. It's bringing nutrients to the, the tree that you can see up above. And to me, that's like the Old Testament is like the foundation or the roots. And then the New Testament is like the tree that you can see clearly. And we who are the Gentile bride of Christ, those of us who are Gentiles who have been grafted into that olive tree, as Paul says in Romans 11, we are grafted in. We didn't become that tree because Israel still belongs to God. He has a plan for them in the future. Romans 11 makes that very clear. But we are grafted into that tree. And in Romans 11, Paul says God is able to graft the the, the natural tree back into itself. And what an amazing thing that's going to be. What a great celebration that's going to be. Kind of like the prodigal son when he comes home. Do you want to celebrate or do you want to, you know, pucker up and, and be mad about it? And, and you know, why are you saving them, Lord? Why do you want to save Israel? Some Christians are like that. We don't want to be like that. We want to celebrate with God when they do come back. And there's this great thing happening in Israel right now. There's channels like So Be It and One for Israel, and thousands of Israelis, Jewish Israelis, are coming to believe in the true Messiah, their Jewish Messiah, and it's powerful. All right, let's get back into the presentation, you guys. So here we are, and we see that the, you know, the Old Testament, or excuse me, the New Testament is unfolded in the Old, and the Old Testament is unfolded in the new so that the new testament's infolded in the old so it's exciting all right let's get into genesis 24 eleazar he's not named here because as jesus said in john 16 right john 16 verses 13 to 15 he says when the holy spirit excuse me the spirit of truth that is also the holy spirit has come he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come, and he will glorify me. This is what Jesus said. For he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. So he speaks of the Son. Now, I want to get into this. This is really exciting for me because one of the subscribers to this channel, or one of the viewers, um, this guy's really cool. And uh, Landis, if you're watching, hey, thanks, buddy, for commenting because you encouraged me to do this episode. I was going to skip this and go straight to Joseph's story, which is a very powerful picture of Jesus. And we will do that. That's going to be the next one. I'm real excited. You might want to subscribe and hit that bell so you can see that episode when it comes up. But Landis commented. I'm going to show it to you. He'll show you his comment. And he encouraged me through this comment to, to go ahead and, and let's do this uh, episode on Eleazar looking for the bride for Isaac, which is a picture, right, of the Holy Spirit uh, getting the church for Jesus. So he said, I enjoyed this video. He watched this one right here on Genesis 22, Isaac and Christ. And he said, I enjoyed this video. When you start seeing the types and the parallels in the Bible, it completely changes the way you view the scriptures, Along with the connection you pointed out between Abraham, Isaac, to the Father, and Jesus in the account in Genesis 22, you also you can also see it in Genesis 24, where you, where you have Abraham calling his servant to go find Isaac a wife. This guy's really, uh, this guy's a Bible scholar. <laughs> Landis, if you're watching, man, you are awesome. And the servant ends up bringing back Rebecca, and they marry. 
Also, pay attention to the fact that Rebecca is given the choice to return with the servant to remain with her family. So just like us, she has choice. You don't have to believe in Jesus. You have a choice here and follow him. You have a choice. The good choice is to follow him, but, you know. So he continued, she chooses to go to Isaac. That Genesis 24 account parallels the Father sending the Holy Spirit to draw people to his own son, or to his, his son, Jesus. And we are drawn and invited by the Spirit, but we must respond to embrace Jesus. And it is no coincidence that the relationship between Christ and his church is one likened to a marriage. And then he tells me, he gives me some encouragement here. He says, keep doing these videos. They truly show the depth of the scriptures and how God weaves everything together. Landis Rigsby. Thank you, my friend. You are awesome, man. And uh, you really did encourage me. I knew that Eleazar was a type of the Holy Spirit, but I thought, you know, it's kind of out there maybe, but no, it's not. It's for real. God did this on purpose. All right. So this is so exciting, you guys. And by the way, if you have not seen those other episodes, you can check those out. You can go back to Genesis 22, see how Isaac and the father uh, was a picture of the son and the father and the son going up that same mountain. Mount Moriah is actually Jerusalem, and he was carrying the wood on his back, which is a picture of the cross. And then here you have this episode now. So it's so exciting. So Genesis 24, Genesis 24, here we go. We're going to start diving into it right now. When Abraham saw that his son Isaac was already 40 years old, right? So we know he was he was at 40 years old and still unmarried. He decided that it, the time had come to find a bride for his son. All right, so Genesis 24 says, you shall go to my country. He's telling the servant right here, probably Eleazar, and to my family and take a wife for my son Isaac, or Yitzhak, if you're in Israel, it means laughter. <laughs> it's so awesome. God laughs. And then in verse six, it says, then Abraham said to him, beware that you do not take my son back there. Okay, back where? back to Mesopotamia, right, where where Abraham originally came from, and that's the same area of Babylon. So beware that you don't take my son back to that area. And where did Isaac stay? He stayed in the promised land. He was always there in that land. And where did Jesus stay primarily? And when he was a baby, they went to Egypt just for a little bit, right? But where did he primarily stay? He was in the land of Israel and going to the Jewish people first. And that's where he stayed physically when he was here on earth the first time. And uh, so we see that same picture in, in this story. It's pretty exciting stuff. So Genesis 24 continues and it says he gives, he gives her gifts, right? He did do that. So Eleazar, he finds Rebecca. It's a great story. I encourage you to read the whole thing. We're not going to do it here, but he gives her gifts. And what does the Holy Spirit do for us? He gives us gifts too. It's so exciting. This is great. All right. And then verse 55, but her brother, right? Her brother and her mother said, and that her brother, by the way, was Laban. He comes into play later, right? Laban. And her mother said, let the young woman stay with a, uh, us for a few days and say 10 afterward, she may go. However, he, right? Eleazar, it's not, his name's not mentioned here, just like all the types of Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. His name's not mentioned, but we know who he is. He said to them, do not delay me, since the Lord has prospered my way. Send me away so that I may go to my master. <clears throat> and in verse 57, it says, and they said, we will call the young woman and ask her. Wow, they really want to keep her there in that area, right? And then verse 58, then they called Rebecca and she, and, and excuse me, and said to her, will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. Wow. So Isaac went out to meditate in the field. So now the, the servant who is this uh, Holy Spirit type has the bride, which is Rebecca, and she's a type of the, of the church. And they're, they're headed towards Isaac and the, and the promised land. And what this really is to me, you guys, I think this is a picture of the end, the final marriage where there's the actual marriage of the lamb and his bride or the bridegroom and his bride, and they're together now. And that's what we're seeing here. And that could be when the rapture of the church happens, right? Or after the seven-year period, 
We don't know for sure, but that's what it looks like here. And it's really interesting. So verse 63, here we are again, verse 63 of Genesis 24. Isaac went out to meditate in the field toward evening, and he raised his eyes and looked, and behold, camels were coming. (laughs) Right. And Rebekah raised her eyes, and when she saw Isaac... She dismounted from her camel. And the actual translation of that in the Hebrew was that she fell prostrate uh, to Isaac, which is a picture of Jesus again, right? And she said to the servant, who is that man walking in the field to meet us? And the servant said, he is my master. Wow. And then she took her veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent, and he took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. That is so beautiful, you guys, because there was a Jewish tradition in those days, and even in Jesus' day, this is how it worked. They got betrothed. That was like as good as being married. But what happened was this soon-to-be bride and, 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 and groom together. They were with the father, and they would have the cup, right, the wine and the bread together, and they would drink from the cup together. This was like a way of, of signifying. It was like a covenant, and the son would go. He, he would go back to the father, and he'd prepare a place in the father's house. Like here we see the tent of his mom, uh, right, the, of Sarah's tent, And it was attached to what? The father's house. So the son would prepare a place at the father's house for a seven-day honeymoon, right? But he didn't know when it was ready. Only the father knew. The father would check on it, and and one day the father would say, okay, it's ready. Go get your bride. Do you see the picture? Same thing with Jesus. And someday Jesus will, he'll get us, and I think the Holy Spirit will take us to him, right? (laughs) And and then what happens? We have a seven-day honeymoon year honeymoon with Jesus, right? During that seven-year tribulation period. And I believe that's how it's going to happen. But here we're seeing a snapshot of it it in Genesis 24, and it's so exciting, you guys. This is so great. Isn't this fun to do? But as promised, if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, and you would like to do so right now, my friend, he is a prayer away. This would be a prayer from you to, from you to God. It has nothing to do with me or anybody else. This is business between you and God right now. And if you feel the knocking on the door of your heart right now, you may be sensing that, then you can open your heart up to him right now. You can pray this prayer to God and be saved, to be born again, to be considered the bride of Christ, the bride of the Messiah. Why would you turn this down? This is the greatest gift ever. So if this speaks to your heart, my friend, you can do this right now. You just simply say this prayer after me from your heart to God. Here we go. Repeat after me. Dear God, I know that I am a sinner and I am sorry for my sin. I believe that Jesus came down from heaven. I believe he was born of a virgin. And I believe that he died on the cross and shed his blood for me. I also believe that in three days he was raised from the dead and he's alive right now. I want to follow him as my Lord and as my Savior from this day forward. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for loving me. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, my friend, if you did that. Heaven rejoices right now. That's what the Bible says. When one repents, that means just turns to God, turns away from their evil, sinful ways, and turns toward God, heaven rejoices because he's got a bride. He's got you as his bride now, and it's so exciting. Make sure you get plugged into a fellowship of other believers that teach the Bible, read your Bible every day, pray every day, And uh, I love you. God bless you. And don't forget, you guys, click on this playlist right here and you can see all of the episodes of Jesus in the Old Testament. We're going to be going through Joseph next. Yosef, if you're in Israel. He, Yosef, was a huge, huge picture of Jesus Christ. And we're going to have many episodes on it. And I'm very excited about it because 
Joseph is my favorite character in the Old Testament, and I always wondered why, and one day I figured it out. He was a picture and a type, a portrait of Yeshua HaMashiach, of Jesus the Messiah.